Hey guys, welcome to part two of my Touch Up Paint series. This is a follow up to my original Touch Up Paint video where I filled a scratch in on my back bumper. I had a lot of comments on my original video where viewers gave me tips on how to make this look even better. So I thought I'd make a second video up from those tips. Again, I appreciate the comments. Thank you. Um, what I did in this video, or what I did here, was I added three layers of the Touch Up Paint that I had in the original video. This is Duplicolor, two in one scratch fix. I got this at AutoZone, you can get this at multiple auto uh, parts stores, as well as the auto parts section of like Walmart, Target, etc. I'm also going to be using Duplicolor 2-in-1 uh, Scratch Fix Clear Coat. We're going to add this at the end of the video. You're going to need a 2000 grit sandpaper and some water. I put it in just in a spray bottle to make it easier. What we're going to do is, what I did here was, I added three layers of the touch-up paint itself so that the paint was above the original paint. So I'm filling it so that it's actually sticking out slightly. We're going to sand that down flush with the original paint. Then we're going to add the layer of clear coat. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to sand it down flush with the, reg the rest of the paint. And then we're going to use some compounds to polish it off and add a layer of wax to seal it up. You're going to see here this, this haze that's around the paint. You don't need to do this. I already sanded after my second layer of paint. Um, I noticed that I wasn't complete, that the scratch wasn't completely filled, so I added a, added a third layer. So I'd recommend adding three layers of paint to make sure that it's completely filled in. Another option you can do is at the auto parts store, you might notice that there's a primer in the same container. The primer is what's usually underneath the paint itself. You'd fill the scratch in with the primer and then add your layers of paint on top of that. I didn't do that in this video, but that's something I might, might, might recommend. Um, so let's zoom in on this scratch and I'll show you uh, how to sand and how to apply the clear coat. So here you can see the very nice scratch that somebody put into my back bumper. Um, here is where I added the touch up paint. That haziness is that sanding that I did after the second coat. Again, I don't recommend this. I would just add the three layers of paint and then sand at the end. Um, another option, like I said, is to add primer. Um, if the scratch is deep enough, you'd probably want to add a little bit of primer in the scratch and then add the layers of paint. So I'm going to use a 2000 grit sandpaper and some water. I'm going to wet the sandpaper first and then I'm going to wet the car. You want everything to be nice and wet. You don't want to uh, sand with, uh, without water because it can cause more damage. And you want to kind of keep the sanding even. Um, so I would try to apply uh, even pressure as you sand. Another option is you can actually get a sand block. Uh, they sell these. I, it was, it was hard, they were hard to find so I didn't purchase it. Um, but you can actually get it where it looks like a sponge and it has sandpaper on the outside. That helps keep everything nice and even. I'm just going to use the sandpaper though in this video. So again, you're going to go in circular motions. And try to make the paint flush with the original paint on your car. And I'm going to keep adding water as I go along. Okay, so here you can see we already sanded the touch-up paint flush with the original paint. When you run your finger over it, you should feel that it's, uh, shouldn't feel anything sticking up. Uh, you can also see the haziness again from the sandpaper. This gives you a good look at what your paint will look like. If you have a compound or a polishing compound that you can get at an auto parts store or an auto parts, auto parts center, uh, you can use the compound to smooth out these fine scratches that you put in the original paint. Um, so don't worry when you see this. I know this looks a lot worse than what it was, but we'll be able to fix this in the end as long as you get compound. Um, and we're going to buff that nice and smooth, and once you put some wax on there, you won't even notice it. So to add the clear coat, we're going to add it the same way as we added the touch-up paint, but you want to go a little bit beyond where the touch-up paint was. That way you have a nice seal. The clear coat, too, itself is a little bit uh, more runny than the original paint, so just, to, just be careful of that as well. So to add the clear coat, it's going to be similar to the touch-up paint, like I said before. Um, again, make sure you use a finger rest, and you're going to be covering the paint. So here you can see we finished adding the clear coat to the touch-up paint. Within 30 minutes, if you want, you can add another layer of clear coat, or as add, add as many as you'd like to make sure that you've filled it up all the way. Again, just waiting 30 minutes in between. And then finally, before you sand it down, make sure you wait a full 24 hours so that everything is nice and dry. We're going to sand this down tomorrow, add some compound and wax, and we'll see how it turns out. 
Okay, so here we are 24 hours later. The clear coat has dried. I'm gonna sand this down flush with the rest of the paint, just like I did uh, the touch-up paint before uh, earlier in the video. Again, you wanna make sure that you use a spray bottle or you wanna wet the area as well as the sandpaper before you begin. And again, you're gonna be doing the circular motions to sand this down flush, again, with even pressure. Okay, so next we're gonna add the polishing compound. It comes in a tub like this. I'm using the white polishing compound. This isn't, isn't as harsh. Uh, there's also an orangish uh, compound that you can buy that's a little bit stronger, but I'm gonna use the white here. To add it, you're gonna add it just like uh, regular wax. I'm gonna use a rag, and I'm, gonna, I'm going to apply it in the area where I sanded. So next, we're going to use a buffer to uh, buff this and shine it up. Let it dry a little bit first, so it gets kind of a haze to it, similar to wax. So here I already finished using the compound. I did it about three times where I added the compound and buffed it off. Now I'm adding the wax. I'm going to let it dry. And actually Turtle Wax sells this um, color magic that actually can match the color of your car. Um, I have a black one here. That'll help too to make it blend in a lot better. Um, so I'm going to let this dry and buff it off and see how it turns out. Okay guys, so here I am in the middle of buffing and compounding the area. It probably looks a little different on the video right now, but in person I think this looks great. I'm very happy with this. You might notice that there's some haziness around the areas where we sanded. That's because I probably sanded too hard, and the reason I know this is because I removed some of the paint in these areas. So my recommendation to you is to sand a little bit more lightly than I did earlier in the video, or to use a 3000 grit sandpaper instead of the 2000 grit sandpaper that I use as well. Uh, so I'm going to continue to do this for the next half hour, get this to look almost good as new, and I'm going to be touching up these areas where the, sand, or the paint actually came off. Otherwise, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment below. This is Rich's Methods, and I will see you on YouTube. Bye.